I'm Kyle Smedley. I am a third year journalism and telecommunications major uh, with minors in sports studies and film and screenwriting here at Ball State. My journey to Ball State it's actually, it's interesting just because um, I'm from Muncie. I've lived here my whole life. When I was a kid, I didn't want to go to Ball State because I wanted to do something different. I was like, everybody in my family's gone here. Nothing against Ball State. I mean, it's a, it's a nice university. I just I want to go see, do something different. And uh, I got to my senior year, second semester, and I was like, you know, I've applied and I've got accepted at Ball State, IU, IUPUI, but really like, what do I want to do? I'm not the type to go in with like an undecided major. You know, that's great for some people and you know, there's, there's certainly nothing wrong with that. But for me, I kind of need a plan. And I just, I really enjoy, like I've always loved film and sports, just like any form of storytelling in general. So I'm just like, how can I combine the two? And I was like, well, maybe I'll just go into journalism and see what happens. And I started writing for the Daily News, the Ball State Daily News. I mean, it was, it was instant where I was like, yeah, okay, I'm, this is something I really like doing. My favorite story I've written for the Ball State Daily News I've written ones that I'm really proud of. I love a feature where you can just sink your teeth into it. There's someone that I got connected with last year. He graduated from Muncie Central. Uh, he's the same age as me, so last year he would have been 19. And his kidney, he had 75% kidney failure. And I was just, I was able to go to his house. It was such a, like a rich family. I mean, they, they loved each other so much and really you wouldn't be able to tell you know, what had happened and what had been going on. But some of the stories that he told me about the things that he had been through with the kidney failure was crazy. There's some stories where you just can't help but like kind of form a relationship with the sources. Um, while you're doing the story, for, at least for me personally, I definitely try not to do it while I'm actively doing the story so I don't have bias when I'm writing. So it's been, it's been nice to, you know, keep in touch with them. The Keating competition was last fall. Um, I applied for it. Uh, it's something that you have to apply for pretty early on in the in the fall. My old boss, um, Lisa Renzi Rhodes, she's helped me out more than anybody else in journalism. When I got accepted or you know invited to go, I was like, yeah, you know, like I got I got accepted, I got invited, and Lisa is like, they only accept like 10 people across like the whole state, and there's like hundreds of applicants. And then she said that, and I was like, then it kind of sunk in. So it was really cool. Um, we got to go down and meet with um, some professional writers, you know, people who work for publications like The Athletic, like the Indy Star, um, like a paper out in Pittsburgh. And then you kind of get the night to do whatever and pretty much everybody went up to their hotel room and kind of locked in uh, for the next day because they, they give you your story topic right there in the lobby. They don't tell you the day before or anything like that. They give you the story topic right there in the lobby. They say, gotta have it done at two o'clock. Um, and this one was a broad topic. It was go tell a story about either a place or people. And that was, that was nice for me because I know Indianapolis. I, I mean, I'm not from there, but I've lived an hour away, so I know what it is. And there's this really nice old deli there called Shapiro's, which has been there for like more than 100 years. And I had just been to eat there with my friend like two weeks before. And so they said that and I was like, that's where I'm going. All the people I talked to grew up in Indy and they grew up eating Shapiro's and all the people I talked to have been going there consistently every week for like 50 years. And in a, in a city like Indianapolis, it's so big to have small places like that that are well known but still hubs of community, that's really cool. I was nervous because I was the first one done with interviews. So like you get done with interviews and then you go to the Indy Star and sit in a conference room and write. First one there, first one done writing. I had like an hour and a half. Like I think it was, like I said, I think it was due at two and I finished at like 12.30 and I was like, man, I, th I feel like I finished too fast, but I don't, I, I don't. This is the best I can do. They held like a banquet dinner where you could invite friends or family. Um, so I invited, you know, both my parents, both my step parents, my girlfriend, we all sat at a table for the banquet dinner where we got to listen to um, Dana Benbo speak from the Indy Star. They only announced the top three stories out of the 10. Um, and they do like a short like preamble about like what the story is about and then who wrote it. And they started announcing number one. Um, 
and they said, I, I remember they said like Shapiro's, and so obviously I knew that I had won. Winning was cool. Um, you get a nice check for it. Uh, you get a lot of rec recognition, obviously. It looks good on a resume, but the coolest thing was seeing like how happy like my parents and my girlfriend were. They were just like buzzing. That was the best part, was like the people around me being happy. I, I don't think people who know me have this perception of me, but maybe people who don't. Um, I don't want to be defined by one thing. I really enjoy when people are able to see and realize that not just me, but everybody, the most interesting people have so many different interests and you can't just say, oh, this, this defines this person. As much as I'm very proud of it, I don't want to be known as the reporter. Um, I just want to be known as Kyle. Right now, as far as, as, far as goals that I want to accomplish um, by the end of the semester, Right now I'm the beat reporter for the men's basketball team. And I, I would like to, you know, I've written some stories that kind of analyze the team and, you know, player profiles and things like that. But I would like to find something a little bit deeper with the men's team. Just find something that maybe I don't even know about yet, but I find out about something that we can really tap into and dive deep into. Professionally, I want to keep doing what I've been doing, which is really upping my quality of work and quantity at the same time. And then academically, you know, I would, I would just like to do what I've been doing, keep my GPA above a 3.5. It, it's not as big of a thing to me, but it is nice. But my parents love when I make the Dean's List, so I would love to do that again just to make them happy. I guess I have two things as far as advice goes. You, you have to put yourself out there and meet new people and make those connections, like I said. Networking is everything. It's really everything in any industry, but especially in journalism, it, it really is about who you know. So let's say that you know you have a writer that you really like. If they have contact info, like message them. As far as work itself goes, just get started as soon as you can. I know there's a lot of people who are nervous to start because they've never done it before or they don't think they would be good enough to do it. This is the best place to start because in the real world, you can't really like go through trial and error. You have to get a job and you have to perform or you're gonna get fired. Here, you can go through trial and error. You're supposed to go through the trial and error. You're supposed to learn. Uh, so just get started as soon as you can and don't burn yourself out because it's very easy to get burned out, but also be constantly working on something so that you can continue to get your clips because the only way that you get better at writing is by writing more.